So good morning. I'm sorry. <laughs> good morning, everybody. We are um, here again for another webinar of the Prime Fish Project, and we will like to welcome everybody of you and to do a, a, a very brief introduction to the project. Um, the Prime Fish Project is an European Horizon 2020 project that has been working for a number of years to strengthen the competitiveness of the aquaculture and fisheries sector in Europe. So one of our main outcomes is, is a market-oriented uh, tool that will support uh, the activity of companies and institutions engaged in the sector. And the, today's webinar it will be very much focused on the results of the market research that we have developed focus on the United on the market of the United Kingdom. This research has been developed mainly by the Italian universities of Pavia and Parma. As you may also be aware, there's a lot of, uh, other webinars that are going to be held focus on the Italian market and on the relevance of sustainability for the sector. Uh, if you have any doubt of com or comment, you have a window, a chat window on your right, through which you can address us your questions and doubts. And today, uh, the partner that will be in charge of introducing you to this results, focus on the United Kingdom market, will be uh, the researcher Dimitar Taskov, of the University of Stirling. So, Dimitar, thank you very much for being here, and the floor is yours. Uh, thank you, Mercedes, and uh, welcome um, to our participants. Um, today, uh, in the several uh, next slides, I'm going to try to give some information, uh, trying to answer these uh, two questions. Um, what are the characteristics of fish consumers uh, in the UK, and uh, how much are fish consumers in the UK willing to spend on seafood products with uh, different specifications, which uh, major uh, results from uh, the work that our partners in Italy have uh, done over the last year. And uh, this information is uh, important for companies uh, that are innovating and uh, developing new seafood products because uh, market segmentation, uh, which is essentially what question one um, uh, analyzes, helps companies to cope with um, an increasingly competitive market, uh, helps them to understand their customers better, to develop products that uh, satisfy specific wants, uh, and to strategically position themselves, um, for example, through differentiation. Uh, whereas the willingness to pay research, which is uh, uh, question number two, um, is the, uh, um, helps co companies price their products successfully and explore uh, product attributes which can bring them the most competitive advantage and uh, are most profitable. So let's start with uh, uh, what are the characteristics of, of fish consumers in the UK. Um, to answer this question, um, researchers from the University of Pavia in Italy have collected information from a representative sample of 4,000 fish uh, consumers in the UK, France, Italy, Germany, and Spain, or uh, 800 res uh, respondents per country. And on the basis of that, uh, they have developed a country-specific segmentation uh, such as is, for example, the UK, which we'll see now, uh, as well as an overarching European segmentation uh, of the market. Uh, the surveys have been done online and uh, covered uh, a set of characteristics, uh, such as uh, socio-demographics of consumers, um, age, gender, income, um, generation, uh, and... Uh, uh, education, for example, as well as socio-demographic uh, socio characteristics uh, uh, like uh, their patterns of consumption, whether it's low, high, or medium, uh, the, their brand loyalty, um, uh, ge geographic uh, aspects where they're based, location in, um, such as inland or close to the shore, uh, whether it's rural or urban, and so on. 
and psychographic characteristics um, such as what activities they're interested in, their opinions about certain things such as cooking, um, um, their uh, um, general lifestyle um, uh, choices. And on the basis of these characteristics, uh, consumers uh, have been grouped into segments which uh, um, using a method statistical methodology known as latent class analysis uh, and these segments and the consumers in these segments are more similar uh, to each other within the segment as they are uh, between segments so it reduces the heterogeneity of of, of, uh, of the market and, uh, um, and establishes more coherent groups of consumers um, so let's look at what what they have found um, they have identified five um, groups, um, which we can see here on the on the on the images. Um, the biggest uh, segment covering some 45, uh, of, so, sorry, 43 percent of uh, of the cons of the participants who consume fish um, has been uh, named selfish health and convenience type. Um, these are usually younger couples with medium to low income, uh, but uh, who have relatively high expenditure on seafood. And they are well informed and uh, are consulting a number of information sources. Uh, they do not trade off quality for price and are indifferent to brands, uh, origin and traceability of their products as well. Um, their focus is usually on health, such as in nutritional value. Uh, but also on how easy it is to cook it um, and the uh, versatility and uh, uh, the pre uh, preservation qualities of the product are also very important in this group. Uh, in this group, uh, uh, the preferred fish species are salmon and sea bass, which are consumed in medium quantities. In the second uh, largest group, which has been named healthy convenience consumers, um, the focus is on ease of use in cooking, um, in, in, and as well as in, in the storing and in the versatility of the products, as well as on the health attributes. Environmental concerns and um, a request for traceability also play a very important role here. And the women over 50 uh, years old um, with medium to high education and uh, a two-person households describe best this segment. Members of uh, this segment also appreciate wild fish. Uh, their favorite species are sea uh, bream and sea bass, uh, in the form of fresh fillets and uh, ready-to-cook products, as well as whole fish. The next, uh, the third biggest uh, um, group, um, covering some 14% of the of the sample, which is. Uh, quite uh, significant is um, the group of indifferent consumers, um, it, which is mostly composed of young males, uh, single uh, or in a household of two with uh, low um, to medium education and uh, who are medium, medium consumers of seafood. They prefer salmon and cod, ready to eat and ready to cook. Uh, then we have the self-efficacious and local ecologist group, uh, composed mostly of very young uh, uh, singles or two-person households. They are knowledgeable and environmentally cautious. Uh, at the same time, they give much importance to the local context, so they prefer local products. Um, the segment... Uh, um, they enjoy cooking um, and uh, can be characterized as medium consumers with uh, low uh, expenditure. Uh, preferred species here are salmon, sea bass, and sea bream. And finally, we've got the uh, cooking artists, um, which uh, represent about 8% of, of the sample. Uh, um, the members of this group uh, like to cook and experiment with new formats. Uh, taste is important for them, uh, while uh, they are indifferent to health and environmental concerns. Dietary issues are also not important 
these consumers are generally not knowledgeable about fish. Uh, women over 40 years of age uh, in small families with children best describe the socio-demographic characteristics of this group. Uh, they prefer wild origin and their favorite fi uh, fish species are sea, uh, bream and cod. So that's the general information about um, the segments in the UK. How um, can this information be used by companies? Um, uh, segmenting the market and uh, targeting strategically one or two um, segments is uh, can, can help companies to avoid unnecessary competition. Um, it's more likely that uh, a product will be successful uh, if uh, it targets a specific needs of customers so than um, it is created as a generic product um, without any specific targeting, uh, which has been the reason for many of the failures of new product development efforts in the seafood um, um, processing industry. Um, it can also help cut costs from promotional campaigns, as these are uh, um, more narrowly uh, targeted to a small group of people who have the highest likelihood of buying the products rather than, again, uh, general uh, marketing um, and promotional campaigns. And, um, of course, if similar uh, segments in other markets, for example, in other EU markets are identified, this can uh, also be targeted and thus expand the sales of companies more effectively. So, uh, moving on to the second uh, part of uh, this presentation, how much are consumers willing to spend on products? Um, in order to answer this question, our colleagues from uh, the University of Parma, this time in Italy, again, um, have conducted a survey of uh, on a 2,000 respondents from um, France, Italy, Germany, Spain, and the UK, uh, with about 500 respondents per country. And in an online experiment, uh, the participating consumers have been asked to rank seafood products with different sets of characteristics attributes, including price, format, um, um, which we can, uh, are illustrated here, um, format as in whole fillet or ready-to-cook products, uh, production method, whether it's aquaculture or, or, or fisheries, origin, um, nutritional claims, whether the product has such or not, and the uh, same for sustainability claim, whether the product has been sustainability certified or, or, um, or not. Um, and uh, the information collected from this survey has been analyzed using a statistical methodology called choice modeling uh, in order to derive the prices associated with an attribute and uh, uh, and how, and uh, at what level consumers actually value each each attribute. Um, so this has been done for uh, an, uh, the same set of species: cod, herring, salmon, trout, sea bream, sea bass, and pangasius. And um, this is just an example of what product forms as an attribute uh, our uh, colleagues have evaluated such as whole fish, fillets, and ready-to-cook products for every species. But, of course, we've seen that uh, many other attributes also have been um, um, evaluated. So, um, moving on to the uh, results of uh, this uh, experiment. Um, they indicate that salmon and cod are the most preferred uh, species uh, by consumers in the UK. Um, well, the least popular species are pangasius and sea bass. Uh, when it comes to product form, easy to cook products uh, are preferred over whole or round cut presentations uh, for all species except for salmon. So here in this in this column uh, product format, we, we can see how the prices 
change when uh, the the uh, product form changes. The basis, the the, the, the base price has been for uh, ready to cook uh, product. So if uh, if a cod, for example, product is presented in a round cut or a fillet uh, format, the prices uh, change uh, in this way. Um, 37% down for for round cut or 8.5% uh, up uh, respectively for for a, for a fillet and uh, we can see that uh, in almost all cases um, the round cut for form of product has been uh, valued less than uh, ready to cook except for salmon where uh, it is actually uh, preferred over, uh, in fact, which means I'm willing to spend more on that kind of form rather than ready to cook products. Um, the, the sustainability uh, label is uh, most highly valued for herring and sea bream, um, which we can see here, uh, whereas it's de actually detrimental uh, for the um, pangaceous products. Um, uh, it results in a 30% uh, reduction in price, um, is what consumers have indicated. Uh, the nutritional and health claims is mostly appreciated for Pangasius, however, and uh, uh, salmon and, and trout. And uh, generally, wild, wild origin is preferred over farmed, of course, for the species that can come from, from wild origin. Uh, or come, or, or um, and not just from aquaculture, and in particular, it's the, um, the case of sea bass and uh, and sea bream. And we, we can see here with, in a little bit more detail um, when it comes to um, wild origin, and this is whole uh, or round cut presentation uh, fillets and ready to cook products. The wild origin has a really high um, markup in the case of sea bass and, uh, and salmon. So, um, again, how can this information be um, uh, utilized by companies? Um, uh, product form um, has, uh, um, as we have seen, uh, strong influence on, on product product price but not always uh, processed products have a have a positive um, uh, impact uh, as is, is the case of salmon for example less processed products may have a higher uh, may be associated with higher value um, the attribute wild can in some cases have a very high positive impact on willingness to pay uh, so this is something to consider when uh, products are um, when the origin of products is selected, and uh, nu nutritional and health claims um, have have always positive impact, but sometimes is is uh, very small, uh, negligible uh, influence on uh, the utility of consumers. Sustainability claims, um, on the other hand, can have either positive or negative uh, impact. Sometimes it's negative, uh, is what consumers have indicated. But we have to keep in mind that this is um, a study which involves um, stated uh, preference, which is um, different from revealed preference. And when it comes to uh, sustainability claims specifically, um, as we have seen in, in, in the previous uh, study, consumers are not always knowledgeable about this or they are not uh, always um, to involved with these uh, issues, it's commonly uh, um, driven by by leading companies in uh, in this uh, industry, such as retailers who demand um, these kind of certifications as a form of brand or reputation management. And uh, with this, I conclude my um, presentation and um, turn over to. Mercedes, to, who will demonstrate um, how this uh, type of research can be uh, further explored in the um, 
Prime DSS module Mercedes. Thank you very much, Dimitar. Um, I'm watching the, the screen sharing right now. It should take a few minutes to start on your screens. Okay, so I think you now must be receiving the screen of my computer. And let's take a look a little bit at the Prime DSS. As we have introduced already, the Prime DSS is a market-oriented tool focused on the seafood sector, and it very much offers an easy access to some of the researchers that we have done in the, in the framework of PrimeFish. For instance, now you are seeing the, the home of the tool, where you have a quick access to the six main tools, and also you can see the tweet line of the PrimeFish profile. And also over here, we will be doing a short tools that offer us a quick access to the studies, market studies that we have seen today. So let's start with the product success check, offering easy access to market segmentation in the five countries that Dimitar has very well explained. So uh, what we can do here is to input our preferred values. Of course, let's say it's United Kingdom. Kingdom because it's a, a webinar we are holding today and code will be uh, quite a uh, um, chosen species. While to origin, we can choose high price range and medium high consumption. Then we will have the opportunity to choose among other marketing attributes. It could be linked to the marketing attributes more similar with the products you're working on, or maybe to the products your competitors are working on. So let's uh, choose for a very specific kind of product, maybe a familiar product, local origin, natural, low calorie content, that does not use promotion, uh, very much for special dietary needs, friendly packaging, okay, boneless, safe preparation time, not choose on brand, from European Union origin, and organic. We can choose also here among a different uh, array of formats, the one that we would like to be highlighted on the results. So we can choose home as a more traditional format and perform, perform sorry, the product success check. Okay, so the suggestion and the outcome of our studies tell us that the best matching customer profile for this product will be the self-efficacious local ecologist. Here you can draw some characteristic of this profile. It's one of the smallest segment size in the United Kingdom market with an increasing trend. General fish consumption is medium with an average monthly expenditure of, of, of 40 pounds. Pretty much a giant profile uh, that consumes in supermarkets with no children. Then we have a dedicated class description and some attributes that are valued by this uh, segment. Nutrients, value for money, being environmentally friendly, containing omega-3. And finally, we can check over the different formats options that where the whole sits. So here we can say that this segment uh, has a preference either for fresh or frozen fillets and they're ready to cook the whole will be not uh, their preferred option. Then you can also print the results. And let's take a look now at the willingness to pay tool. That it's very much um, focused on the survey realized by the Parma team. And that will uh, we offer you some hints on the willingness to pay for seafood products. So here, let's choose again the United Kingdom. This time we can focus on salmon, um, farmed, oh, let's choose wild, and on Philips. With sustainability level and also with a claim on nutritional and health benefits for the consumer. 
when we run the Linux to pay tool, what we have here is uh, the outcomes of the survey that give us a hint on how much the consumer uh, expresses that he's willing to spend on a product. We can say that uh, the salmon, when it's white, has a premium also for showing labels for sustainability, but overall for nutritional and health content. It offers you also some graphs to, uh, to visualize these attributes that show a positive feeling today. If there was a negative willingness today, we will see that outline highlighted in red here, and a little bit of the text showing you how to interpret these results, a little bit on the research done, and a comparison between the different formats. Here we say that for some of the, the preferred presentation will be the fillet, and then the whole round cut. Also, you can see the, the comparison with the other species that are being uh, foc that are the focus species of the project. While well, salmon is one of the species that consumers show a highest willingness to pay, but in the United Kingdom, the most uh, the, the the queen will be the sea bass <laughs> and the sea bass. And then you can see the comparison by country where the United Kingdom is uh, not one of the countries that will show a high willingness to pay. It's uh, the least one together with Spain, whereas in Italy and Germany, they will get uh, highest premiums. And now let me show you that also in the wiki, in this link over here, you can access the background information of the tools that will offer you support when you are trying to interpret the results or trying to take a quick glance on how the results that are inherent to these tools have been found out. This is the wiki on the public success check and of course there's another one on the willingness to pay. So this is a quick overview of the tool. And I think that you can open the slot for the questions and answers and comments. If you have any comments, do not hesitate to send us over the chat window, please. Back to the presentation. And for the moment, I would like to address a brief question to the stealing team over there, Dimitar. We have uh, seen this quick uh, um, picture of the British market, and I'm sure that you, as, as being uh, living in the United Kingdom and being a researcher on the sector, you have also uh, lots of insights uh, to share with us. And I would like very much to ask you if, from your point of view, if there was, if there is any key advice on how a small company could make use of the results of this market research. Um, thanks, Mercedes. Um, yeah, as I have uh, outlined in the in the conclusions of uh, it, of each of these um, uh, studies, um, for, for small companies who are uh, especially facing a lot of competition nowadays from from imports and from from bigger companies and um, from other, other small companies, it's very important for them to. Um, um, be very to be strategic in, in how they uh, how they compete, um, and uh, these uh, tools can can help them select um, uh, segments in the market that they can target and uh, be more efficient in in, in uh, 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 their pro promotional efforts in their product development efforts, um, which uh, is. Um, is a, a a competitive advantage. So it it also helps, um, as I have uh, outlined, um, choose the attributes of these products and target specific attributes that that might uh, even even further uh, um, 
improve their uh, profitability and uh, success on the market for the specific segments that they have already selected. So both of these uh, tools uh, used in um, uh, used together in, in, in combination in conjunction um, can uh, can help companies be more uh, competitive. I hope this answers your question. Yes, yeah, thank you very much, Dimitar. I'm seeing that Gert has one question. I don't know, Gert, if you are connected through the micro also. If not, you can address us. Okay. So, um, Dimitar, you're now uh, the facilitator. You can maybe back, go back to the slide with the willingness to pay table. <laughs> Um, it's it's a good question, um, uh, Gerd. Uh, the question is why um, Salmon uh, has uh, a positive. Uh, why why uh, uh, round cut or fillets uh, give a premium over uh, ready to cook products for salmon and and not for other products as as, uh, as I'm understanding. Um, I think uh, this might be related to um, to the uh, perception of consumers that salmon is a is a is a high high value species and it, it's. Um, um, the less pr processed it is, the higher the, va the value of the species, if you see what I mean. It has pr properties uh, such as taste, structure, uh, texture, um, color, which uh, are um, um, high, uh, highly valued even without the species being processed. I think that's, that might be a potential um, answer to this question. But of course, um, our... our um, Partners from from Italy who will actually done the survey might be better uh, uh, answering this, and uh, you can address this question to them as well, Gerd. I hope this this uh, helps. Thank you. Hello, thank you. Just to add a little bit of food for thought, um, I will try to send you this link quickly. And if you have access to the DSS on the wiki of the willingness to pay, I will also send you the link. I will not uh, want to spend a little uh, very much this webinar, but in this uh, link you can check the material with which, uh, what well, part of the material with which they work on the survey, on which the willingness to pay results are based on, and you can take even a look at the photos that were shown to the to the participants in the survey. So they they were able to show their preference choosing over um, a whole fillet of a salmon on a tray, another fillet, another tray, and a ready to cook product. So that might give you a more a visual idea of how the survey was done and where these results may come from. But if you have any more or any other doubt, please do not hesitate to, to write us an email. We'll be very, much, very happy to forward the email to the Parma team, which will be also very happy to answer you. <laughs> Thank you. So thank you all very much for your participation. It's been a pleasure to have you around and to come with your collaboration for anything. Do not hesitate to contact us. Thank you. Thank you, Mercedes. Thanks, Gerd.
you are currently the only person in this conference.